You know, I was proud of our group, um, the way that we started off tonight. You know, obviously we got up big early in the first half. I thought our defensive intensity was good. I thought offensively our ball really moved. We took care of the ball for the most part in the first half. Uh, but we got to put 40 minutes together. You know, second half I thought was really sloppy and give Moorhead State a lot of credit. Um, they turned up the pressure. I thought we had some sloppy turnovers, um, just careless with the ball that led to wide open layups at the other end which was disappointing. Uh, we we got to clean that up. I thought otherwise we, we dominated the game, but we, we got to be a heck of a lot better uh, taking care of the ball. You know, I told our guys afterwards, man, I'm really proud of our group, though, overall. You know, this kind of this comes to, you know, to a close. Our non-conference schedule comes to a close. You know, we're 10-1. and one. We have three quad one wins. Uh, we have two road kills. You know, obviously we're able to beat uh, Virginia Tech in Brooklyn, which counts as a road kill for us. And then we were able to beat Oklahoma State at Oklahoma State. We're able to win our Gavit game. We're able to win the shootout. We've had a good non-conference uh, so far. You know, but to me, it's like moving forward, we're zero and zero. And we're just going to take this thing one game at a time. That's what I told our guys. You know, you know, the good thing about the Big East is there's a true champion. It's a nice thing about having 11 teams. There's, it's round robin. There's 20 games. Um, we just got to focus on the one game that's, that's, that's next, and that's going to be Marquette, and that's going to be our focus here for the next couple days. Did you say anything to them about the Big East at this point yet, like after this game? I did. Yeah, I did. You know, that was the first time we've talked about it, Adam. Um, obviously, our whole focus, sole focus was with Moorhead State um, the last couple days leading up, you know, after the shootout. Uh, so this is the first time we've really talked uh, in depth about what we're about to embark on because it's a journey. It's a marathon. And there's going to be highs. There's going to be lows, right? We've got to be able to navigate those highs and lows uh, in order to come out on top. You know, we've talked about this a lot this year, but tonight was another game where – we saw your depth, and and Moorhead State. You know, I know they played better in the second half, but you look at the box score, and it's like they really didn't have an answer for all the things that you were able to throw at them. Um, how much more comfortable are you getting with that depth at this point going into Big East play? You know, I, I always say, uh, you know, depth is only good. It, it, playing time comes down to two things, right? Productivity, and then trust. Right? I, I trust. I feel very comfortable with our depth in big moments too, right? I mean, we've had, you know, Adam Kunkel's led us in scoring in a game, you know, so is Fremantle, so is Nungie, you know, so is Nate Johnson, so is Scruggs. I mean, we have a lot of different guys that can score, that can impact the game. I th Jerome, I think he led us, I believe, tonight, right? He had 15 points, and Jerome's been really good on defense this year overall. You look at all of his numbers. So um, we just have a lot of different guys that can do it. And our guys understand, listen, it's going to be different guys, different nights. Right? We're going to ride the hot hand if a guy's playing really, really well that game, uh, maybe a little bit longer than what we normally would. And, uh, and our guys have a great understanding of that. But I think that's the strength of this team. I think we're one of the deepest teams in the country. Travis, it feels like your defense has kind of been building on itself. I think back to the Oklahoma State game, you closed it out with a big stretch of holding them scoreless. You see uh, tonight you go seven minutes in the first half without them scoring. Is there something you feel like that's clicking better? Are guys just buying in more as they continue to build more confidence? Or what's going on on the defensive side? Yeah, I think, uh, number one, our guys play really hard. They're, they play hard. And I think that's where it starts. That's like the baseline, though, right? I mean, that's the expectation. But our, our guys do play hard. It's funny, Preston, uh, again, he's a good friend of mine, head coach at Moorhead State. And, and he said, man, beforehand, he said, man, you guys play hard. He said, watching you guys on film, he said, we were showing our guys that film to say, hey, listen, this is how hard you got to play, uh, which made me feel good. Um, but our guys are starting to learn. Our ball screen coverage has been pretty dang good. I mean, it, it really has because the game has really changed, right? It, Ten years ago, there were some ball screens, but then it's kind of morphed kind of over time, right, into that's basically what the game is nowadays. Now, Moorhead State was a little uh, unique that they really tried to post broom a lot. And they got us a few times. Listen, he's a tremendous player. Um, but our ball screen defense is pretty dang good. And I think that, along with our rebounding and transition defense, you talk about the things that happen a lot. You've got to be great in transition. You've got to be great in ball screen defense. And then you've got you to limit them to one shot and one shot only. If you do those three things, you've got a chance to be a pretty dang good defensive team. And, our, and I think our team's really grown in all three of those areas. Travis, you guys have 14 foul shot attempts in the second half. Was that a halftime adjustment, or is that more just kind of like flow of the game of how things were going? Flow of the game, you know, Moorhead got a little more aggressive. They don't foul. 
if you look at their numbers kind of heading into the game, it was like, man, I think they – I want to say like 354th in the country and not – they don't foul. And, but I, they tried to turn it up a little bit because they were down, right? So they started pressuring us more. And so we were driving it. And so that's how we got to the free throw line. Obviously, the scoring is pretty balanced tonight. Um, you know, Adam talked about about your depth and things like that. How big is that for you guys when you kind of get consistent scoring like that where, you know, between 7 to 15 points or just about everyone who's playing consistent minutes? I think it makes it hard to scout against. You know, it's like, who are you going to take away? Because if you take away one guy, it's probably going to open up other things for, for other guys, right, on the floor. And, and the, the go-to guy for us is going to be the open guy. We have a lot of different guys who can score the ball and shoot the ball. And, and, and our teammates, they, they, I think that trust is there. It's grown kind of throughout the non-conference. It's taken some time to get to this point. But I think there's a great deal of trust amongst the teammates that, hey, listen, everybody's doing the same thing. We're all going to hit the open guy and play inside, outside basketball. The uh, the turnovers we've talked about, and that's something that's cropped up from time to time. Um, you guys like to play fast. You, you guys are flying up and down the court. Is 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 that kind of a product of that, or is it just carelessness? Is there anything you can really kind of attribute to, to that? Yeah. So so we break down all the turnovers. How, again, how are the turnovers occurring, right? You know, is it due to footwork? Like we had to travel tonight. Is it due to handle? Is it due to decisions off drives in the half court? Is it the post decisions? Is it ball screen decisions? Or is it transition decisions, right? Um, but at the same time, I, no matter what area that it occurs, we have to slow down a little bit. You want to play fast, but again, it's old John Wooden, but you don't want to be in a hurry, right? And uh, I feel like sometimes our guys are in a hurry. Just got to slow down just a hair. I thought we did a great job against UC in the shootout, <clears throat> and they pressure. UC does. They, they turn you over, and I thought we did a great job of playing at our own pace. And, and I think that's so important. Again, we're going to see that, I'm sure. I haven't watched any film of Marquette, but I, I think you know that's what Shaka's doing up there at Marquette. Paul's obviously a veteran, and – I think that there's been times this year, particularly tonight, where it's almost like he knows that that he doesn't need to do try to do too much offensively. He it's almost like instinctually he senses, hey, the, the guys around me are doing more than enough, or, or maybe they have better looks. Like, do you get that sense from Paul that there's games when he knows, hey, you know, maybe tonight I'm I'm going to facilitate, and and other nights I'm going to take over. Yeah, I think that's what great point guards do, right? And I think there's going to be games where he's going to have 24, 25. There's going to be games where he's going to have seven, eight assists and maybe 12 points. And he's fine with that. When you just give in to that and understand that you got to take what the defense gives you, right? If they're going to be really ultra aggressive with Paul, well, then that's probably going to open up things for AK and Nate and Colby and Jack and all these other guys. And then there's going to be games where they're going to say, hey, we're going to try to take away a little bit more maybe Jack Nungy or whoever it is, Zach Fremantle, and that's going to open up things for Paul. And I think Paul understands that offense is meant to be easy. right? When you force things, you look bad. I always say that. When you force things, you look bad. Just take what the defense gives you. And Paul's learned that. He's gotten a lot better at that as, time's kind of, as he's matured as a player and, and over the years. Another guy who I think – has been really impactful and beneficial, and maybe he doesn't have the most glaring numbers on the box score, but Dwan Odom's been really consistent recently but at both ends of the floor. I know he had three turnovers tonight, but he had six assists. And you told a story earlier this season on your radio show about a text that you got from Dwan after, I believe, the exhibition game. And I was wondering if you could maybe rehash that story, if you remember what he texted you, and – is that a type of moment where, where maybe it reinforces that, that you know that you've got the right guys, that, that you can win with these guys? Yeah. Um, you know, Dewan texted me after the exhibition. I think he had a big game in that exhibition, scored 20-some points uh, against Ferris State. And he texted me, hey, Coach, I, I'm all in. Whatever you need from me, I'm good. I'm ready. And when you have guys with that, with that type of mentality, um, it goes a long ways. Like you said, and even Jack Nungy, I talked to Jack leading up to this game because Deontay was obviously sick. He had the flu. And, and I said, Jack, uh, I said, I, I feel like you're doing pretty well coming off the bench. You know, it, it usually comes in around that 18 minute mark. I think you're in a really good rhythm. How do you feel about starting? Do you want to stay in the same role that you're in? Listen, I, this isn't a dictatorship, right? I'm, I'm going to listen to our players. And, and uh, Jack, he, he said, Coach, I'm good. I don't need to start. 
He said, I, I'm good. I trust you. I trust. I just, I just want to win. And, again, when you hear guys like that say that, those types of things, like Dewan did, Jack, I mean, both those guys are more than capable of starting. They're both tremendous players. And, again, the, that gives us the advantage of this team, right, is, that, is we have depth. We have not just depth. We have really, really good depth. And, again, our guys understand that. They're all about winning. So, yes, we do have the right guys in our locker room. The second half, you had a set where you had a Zach and Jack kind of run like a kind of like a high low, where Jack drew a foul, a three foul, got a three point play. Is that something you're going to look to use more of when you have those two on the floor together? Yeah, you know, I think you know as as we start to look at and kind of um, evaluate how to continue to use Jack and Zach together, they're they're both so unique because they're both very very skilled. They both can play outside, inside, drive the ball, post the ball, shoot the ball. Um, they can play buddy ball, like you talked about on the high low. They're both mismatch problems. You know, how are you going to guard their ball screens? Because they both can shoot the ball and create things. So it gives us a lot of flexibility uh, on the offensive end. To your point about Jack not starting, it, you have had some second halves where you get off to a slow start those first couple of minutes. Is there any benefit to looking at putting Jack in that starting mix for those few minutes? Could absolutely again. Listen, we're going to do whatever's best for our team, and and uh, you know Jack felt like he was in a good rhythm doing what he's been doing, and and he's playing tremendous. But but you're right though, Rick. Like tonight, we didn't we started off bad. Now I think tonight, I'll be honest. I thought our guys were just casual, and those turnovers really 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 hurt us early. Um, but but Jack, Jack's a starter level player, as we all know. I mean, he listen. He's he's been tremendous for us. He's playing like an all conference guy, um, and we're we're going we're gonna to play through him a lot. I think um, Moorhead cut it from 28 to 17. You call a timeout. I think you put Scruggs back in the game. Did you say anything? I mean, he, t he took over right there. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Like Paul said in the huddle as I was walking back into the huddle after we met as a staff, you know, he, he, said, he said, fellas, this isn't one guy. This is all of us. So we all got to tighten up our – I'm not going to say the words, but we got to tighten it up a little bit, all right? Um, and, again, just his leadership, Andy, this, this whole – um, this whole season so far has just been tremendous. His voice, it, making sure his teammates are locked in and ready to go. Uh, you know, Paul's really been driving the bus.